Is RFID expensive? Such a simple question, but unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily have a simple answer. But I'm gonna break it down into four categories and make it as simple as it can be. Let's go. RFID tags, RFID hardware and equipment, software, and the installation. That last category of installation is most commonly overlooked in today's day and age because we're certainly in the DIY age with resources like YouTube out there. It takes a matter of minutes to search anything and anything, and you're going to find an answer for how to do it or an explanation as to what it is. But unfortunately, RFID isn't always that simple and that you can just go on YouTube and have all the knowledge to set up an RFID system start to finish, especially if you're looking for a real time location system using passive RFID. It's not as simple as plugging in the hardware and you're good to go. But with that, let's start breaking down the categories, starting with tags. The two types of tags I'm going to cover today are passive RFID tags and active RFID tags. What's the difference? Simply put, passive RFID tags do not have an internal power source or a battery powering the RFID tag and active tags. They utilize a battery to power the tag and constantly transmit a signal back to the reader. I wish there was a small price range that I could give you that's gonna cover the gamut of all passive or active tags. However, the reason it's not that simple is because even though the RFID inlays are somewhat relative and close in cost, the label that the RFID inlays are placed into will change the cost significantly. For instance, if you just have your down and dirty white paper label, I mean, that will be down around the eight to 10 cents per tag. However, if you move up the ladder and start to get to a more durable label that has more polymer based layers, materials that will survive more elements, you can get up to the 50, 60 cents per tag. And if it's an on metal tag or something that requires a foam isolator or other materials, you could get up to even almost a dollar 50 per tag. It's funny though, because that's like the number one question I always get when I attend an industry trade shows for RFID is how expensive is RFID nowadays? Because even less than a decade ago, RFID inlays that are now down to two cents, even two cents, three cents, they were almost 15, 20 cents just for the inlay. And then you throw the label cost in there. I mean, you were in the dollar price range as opposed to now. I mean, we're down all the way to, yeah, 10 cents, I mean, 10 to 20, depending on your, your lower end RFID tags, which makes for a much easier entry into passive RFID. Active on the other hand has stayed fairly consistently over the years, primarily due because the main cost in an active tag is the power supply, the battery inside the tag. Active tags have a window price range anywhere between $5 to up to even $15 per tag. So you can definitely see it's going to add up when you're using an active system. However, there are trade-offs that may justify an active system over a passive. You will need more infrastructure from the hardware equipment side on a passive system than you would with an active system, primarily because in order to read those tags and power the passive tags, you have to have multiple readers in those locations to read those tags. Whereas active, a lot of your cost is going to be attributed to the tags. Whereas you may only need one reader to pick up all the active tags in the area. Moving over to equipment, I'm going to keep it simple and only talk about some of the main cost and, and not nickel and dime all the small potential accessories that could be used, but I'm going to keep it to the bare bones starting with the RFID reader. Now there are two types of readers. You have your fixed readers, which range anywhere from a thousand dollars up to even like $2,500, but cutting the average, you can get a very nice fixed reader for around that $1,500 mark. However, a reader isn't good without the antennas and the cabling to go with it. So once you start throwing in the antennas, cabling, some of those things, you're probably going to be up around that three, three to $5,000 mark for, for one reader setup. 
Now you can see if you're trying to go for that real time location system with RFID and now you're using multiple readers, well, now you're multiplying, you know, $2,500, $3,000 times however many readers you're looking for. However, depending on the situation, there are other alternatives, handheld readers. Now these come in around the same price point as just your base fixed reader, you know, anywhere from $800 up to $1,500 and some of the higher end ones can even go over $2,000. But the benefit of using a handheld reader is the antenna is built into the handheld reader. So you don't have the extra cost of having to buy antennas and cabling because the antenna is fixed to the handheld reader. So now you may be asking, why would I go fixed over a handheld when the cost is clearly in favor of the handheld. Kind of a rule of thumb when you're looking at fixed versus handheld RFID systems, you need to ask yourself, are the RFID tags that you're looking to read, are they going to be moving around or are they gonna be fixed in one location? If your RFID tags such as inventory tracking and your items are gonna be sitting up on a shelf or sitting somewhere stationary, you can take the handheld reader to those tags and that might be a good solution for you to use a handheld. If you're looking for a completely automated hands-off RFID system, fixed readers and fixed antennas are the way to go because then the RFID tags can move throughout your system and automatically be collected and read by the fixed RFID system setup that you have. Moving over to the third category, we have software. This is really difficult to pin down to a specific cost range just because depending on the extent at which you're going to try to accomplish with your RFID system, I mean, the price could almost not even have a cap because if you continue to automate it, continue to add things here and there, it's going to constantly be requiring more investment to add different things. However, for the, the case of giving you a number here today and making it simple, I'm going to use some of the out of box solutions that I've mentioned in some of my other videos that may give you an idea. If you're just looking to get started with an RFID system, what kind of cost you'll be looking to take on. So the average cost of like asset tracking or inventory tracking systems right now that are more out of box solutions. I mean, you're looking anywhere from 200 to $500 um, dollars a month. So, some of the out of box solutions are typically subscription based, which is why it has somewhat of a lower price point to get into the software. However, if you are looking to utilize an RFID system long term, subscription may not be the route you want to go if that price point is too high to get in with some of those softwares. I wanted to take this time again to share a little bit about the software offered from our friends over at Gray Trunk RFID. They offer an out of box asset tracking, asset management software package that comes in at a very reasonable price point that you probably won't find a better entry point when looking to get started with RFID or barcode. If you're just starting off and you only have less than a hundred assets that you're looking to tag with RFID, you can get into a complete asset management software solution for $19 a month. For the solution you're getting for an initial just cost of $19 to get that software, I mean, you have access to Android, iOS apps, which is really like none other on the market right now. The reason I enjoy bringing up Gray Trunk software is because as an engineer, I use that software a lot of times to do a lot of the testing for customers that I would deal with from a troubleshooting standpoint. The software was easy, inexpensive for me to get into. I could instantly download the app on my phone for free, which you can actually do right now. If you go onto the app store and search Gray Trunk RFID, you can just start playing around with the software to kind of see what it is you would be getting into. But again, as you grow in your assets up to 10,000 plus assets, the Gray Trunk RFID software caps out at $149 a month, which is still less than a lot of the other out-of-box solutions on the market. Moving into the last category, we have 
installation. Again, it's difficult to pin down a specific range depending on how big of an area you're looking to cover with this RFID system. A lot of the cost may be due to networking ports and drops and power sources that need to be dropped in and, and other you know building mechanical enhancements that need to be in place in order for the RFID system to be positioned where it needs to be. So without that, I'm gonna kind of go with the low to middle and in terms of RFID integration, say you have one, you know, 50,000 square foot building, you know, that needs a few different access points. I mean, likely you're looking anywhere between five and $10,000, depending on the integrator that you will use to, to install all of the hardware. That may sound like a lot, especially when you're looking at videos on YouTube and you're like, well, I can just self integrate myself. I can plug in the reader. I can put my antenna up in the right spot. Although I am all for DIYers taking on those types of challenges, learning as they go, using resources like my channel to understand a little more about RFID and how to set up a successful system. There are many components that you have to consider when you're looking at an installation. Things such as antenna positioning and location. Because RF waves are invisible, it's not like you have this, this easy visual for how far my antennas is gonna read an RFID tag that passes through the area. So there are certain things such as power settings and antenna gain and polarity that you have to consider when you're going to install your antennas. Not only that, but just because something works in a theoretical test environment, when you get that tag into your actual facility and start doing real world testing, there may be other things in your environment that may cause your RFID system to not be as effective as you thought it would be. So with that, I hope I answered some questions as to what the price point is for getting into an RFID system here in 2022. As always, if you have more questions about any of the topics that I covered today, make sure you reach out, connect with me on LinkedIn, and I would love to answer any more of your questions about RFID. Thanks for joining me on this episode of RFID Made Simple. As always, leave some comments below on what other RFID concepts you want made simple.